afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming out to the Alamo for our musket fire demonstration. All right, today we're going to fire muskets for you guys, but before we can do that, we're going to give a little bit of information about what muskets are. To begin with, muskets are the common battlefield weapon leading up to the siege and battle of the Alamo. They are smooth bore, meaning that they are inaccurate as they lack rifling. Rifling is a series of cut grooves down the barrel of a gun that forces the ball to spin, much like a football. However, without that, the gun will be less accurate. The trade-off you get, however, is when loading a flintlock musket, you are going to be able to load it much quicker than a rifle. A rifle will take one to two minutes to load, whereas a musket will take 15 to 20 seconds. Following that, these, like I said, are flip locks. They are fired by a piece of flint striking a piece of steel, creating a spark that sets the gun off. This is not a perfect system, and there is approximately a one in seven chance of the gun not going off when fired. It's very likely that you will see that today. Now, we're going to have these men fall in at order of arms and have them go to shoulder arms. This is the primary way you will be carrying your musket. It is also the way in which we are going to begin the loading process. I'll give them the command of loading 12 times. Whoa! Bringing the gun over to their right side, they can now open pan. Handle cartridge. They reach into their cartridge pouch and pull out a paper tube filled with gunpowder with a bullet on the bottom. They will open this by tear cartridge. Spitting out the excess, they can now prime, pouring about 10 to 20 grains of that powder into the pan, priming the gun. Once that is done, they must shut pan and cast about. By shutting the pan, they close it, preventing the powder to, uh, from falling out as they bring the gun to their left where they can now charge cartridge. Pouring the remainder of the powder and the paper down the barrel, they will draw a rammer and ram cartridge. Seating the paper, the ball, the powder at the uh, breech or bottom of the barrel, the gun is now loaded and ready to fire. However, we still need to return rammer Otherwise, while we will have two projectiles going down range, we will not be able to reload if we fire that rammer, which does happen. Now we will have them return to shoulder arms. And from here, there are three commands to fire. Those are going to be make ready, take aim, and fire. Exactly. Now, what Kirk is going to do is serve as our signaler, as the drum can be far across the battlefield over the sound of muskets, the sound of artillery. Uh, it's going to allow us to command the troops more effectively. I mean, in, in so mind, after this first stuff. shot that we will command by me, we are going to have two shots commanded by Kirk. have the guns on his shoulders, the drum is loaded and ready, and he'll start giving the command. So my young Texas, will you follow me? We're going to go across the street here. My young Texas. Young and the young at heart, Texas. 
Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Alamo. My name is Ed. I'm going to be your tour guide today. Just a little bit about myself. I'm a retired archaeologist. I've been here for more than four and a half years. People come from around the world and learn about the Alamo. This is a children's tour, so we're not really heavy on the history. But again, don't show sure here. If you have a question, please don't hesitate to ask. Is this your first time in San Antonio? Visiting so all of this is what we call Alamo Plaza today. When you have time on your own later, if you're walking around the plaza, from time to time when you look down you see paint or markers, they're showing you where some walls or buildings used to be. And well, my first question is for the kids. This is Alamo Plaza. But can you point to me, where is the Alamo? Do you see the Alamo? Anybody, you see the Alamo? You know, I'll do that next time. Okay, adults, same question. Where is the Alamo? Oh, that's one of my favorite Alamo. I thought it was there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> is this a trick question? Your, your first surprise, that building is not my yeah. own back in the ah. It's really not. All of this was the Alamo. It's actually a four-acre compound. There's only two buildings left. That one right there. This one. So we're going to talk a little bit. When we go inside, we're going to see a model as well. But the Alamo was a whole mission that was turned into a fort. And then they turned it into a fort. They're not talking about just the one building. It was a four-acre So there were two commanders here. One is William and Mary. Later on, we're going to talk about the battle. Mr. Travis will be killed right there where the post office is at. Where what? Right where the post office is at. That's oh, okay. where Travis will be killed. Where's the post office? We're showing on a model. Right here. Later. That yeah. building? Yeah, that building is the post office, yeah, so and that would have been the post office. Yeah, that's where William B. Travis was killed. And Mr. Yeah. Travis had a headquarters. His headquarters is on the west side. That's what his headquarters is today. Guinness World Records and Ripley's one of the best. So this big monument here is our monument dedicated to the men who died defending the Alamo. It's what we call the cenotaph. They're not buried there, but along the sides are the names of the men we know who died defending the Alamo. Like I said, there's only two buildings still here. This one, and that used to be a Catholic church. And this one, we call it the barracks, but that used to be a it was a Spanish mission. And the battle is in 1836, but this building right here is from 1724. It's only about 15% original, but that's the oldest structure in town. The wall that you're looking at is from 1724. The church is from about the 1750s. There's one more commander whose name is James Bowie. Right there, the brown shed, just to the left of it, where that tree is at, that was Jim Bowie's quarters during the battle. Mr. Bowie was too sick to do anything. He's in the bed. During the battle, that's where he is. Stop here a minute. So, nope, what we call them, that's a replica. I mean, it's not the real cannon. Believe it or not, this is one of the original cannons from the band. The cannon is original, but the carriage is a reproduction. This one was a 16. We actually do have quite a few of the original cannons still here. You see some under the arches over there later. Mr. Bowie was killed there, Mr. Travis there. We have a marker for Mr. There are I'm different accounts on how he was killed, yeah. mm -hmm. but we have a few uh, eyewitness uh, uh, accounts that say uh, this is where Crockett's marker. You want to give it a try? Read. There's some big words in there. Last week, yeah. that's right, he's had a birthday just last week. 
So if we do have a marker, we believe this is where David Crockett's body was found. But he doesn't have a burial. Santa Anna burned all of the bodies, except for one man. He burned all their bodies. We'll talk about the one man later, but Crockett doesn't have a burial. There's people waiting for and if you study Texas history, you may read about the story about Travis drawing a line in the sand. What Mr. Travis did, he gathers all of the men together and it looks like it's not going to be good. But Mr. Travis, he took out his sword, he drew a long line in the sand. And he told all of the men, we understand. If you want to leave, we understand. But if you want to stay and join me, step forward. The story goes that everybody stepped forward except for the one man. His name was Moses. This is the story we really don't know that really happened. There's one in the many stories we never know, but this is the line. That was and adults, this is for you guys mainly. It was a Catholic church. So these niches, they were statues of the saints in the world, but they disappeared right after the battle. And right above the doorway, there's the letters M-A-R. In Latin, that meant Mary, Queen of the If you don't know the history, say, why are soldiers fighting here? Because it's a mission that is turned into a war. So all of the buildings are mission and my wheel is run away really quick. Yeah. Any idea? See that thing called, how do you think that hole got there? Gun? Musket. Musket. Even bigger. Cannon. A cannonball hit the front of the church there. Yeah. That's a real cannonball. The walls in here are original. So when we go inside, we ask, please don't touch them. But these are the original walls. That's actually where it cannonball during the battle. And I told you it never had a roof. If you look at the top, see our famous song? You can see the line there yeah. where they added it. Many, many years after the battle. It was so not there during the battle. And like I said, you're not the first. I'll say 99% of people come for the first time. Because, again, it's just misinformation. Yeah, yeah. We have here. I think I have a real cannonball. This is a real cannibal. Everybody's going to get a chance to feel it. I'm going to guess how much it weighs. I'll give you a clue. It's less than 10 pounds. Don't tell me your answer right away, but when we're all finished, tell me your answer, and if you get it right, we win another different kind of stick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Heavier than what it looks like. Okay, we take guesses. Seven? Six? Six? Nine? Nine? Eight? Eight? Uh, I'm going to go eight. We have one winner. Six pounds. Oh! <laughs> so that cannonball indentation that hit the front of the church, it was a six pounder. And when you get a chance, like I said, over there we have a bronze cannon, that was a six pounder. So imagine the eight And finally we have Thank you so and much. Make this sure is great. You stay hydrated. I live here. And I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> really nice to get Thank you, guys. Thank yeah, you. Guys. Thank, thank you, so you Mr. Much. Ed. Appreciate it. Oh, I want to go. Y'all want to take a picture with me? Yeah, come on.
I'll take y'all's picture.